Welcome to the Tap Room Exclusive. I am Dean Zarbaugh. I am here at Brewfest Waterfront District 6 uh, here in Lorain, Ohio at the Black River Landing. Uh, getting set up right now, looking across at all the great, great beer that is around here. Uh, great Lakes, Royal Docks, uh, right across uh, the street from me. You got Franklin Brewing Company across, Avon Brewing Company. Uh, we got a lot of people around here, and uh, Railroad Brewing Company, I can see, Bascule. A lot of great breweries around here that uh, I can see, and hopefully we can get some people by and uh, have them talk about some beer and see what they're pouring and see what all's going on around here at Brewfest Waterfront District this year. Uh, it sure should be a fun time. Uh, because, you know, this is uh, this has been one of the best beer festivals I've ever been to. I went last year as just a uh, participant, not as a participant, as a uh, attendant. And uh, I had a blast last year. There was a lot of people here, a lot of people wanting to drink great beer and just enjoying the local craft scene. It's a really fun festival. Everybody really seems to be enjoying themselves. Nobody gets too carried away. You don't have to get people carried out of here because uh, they're too drunk or whatever it's just it's a really good time uh and if you guys aren't out this year you definitely definitely have to come back and check it out next year it, this is just an absolute blast one of the best beer festivals around all right everybody Irwin shires from craft beer journeys has joined me at the booth Irwin, thank you coming for coming back to the show uh we were at the medina beer fest together doing this uh Nice little repeat of that. It was a fun night. Uh, I, the, the response was so overwhelming. I was, uh, I was really taken aback by how well you, you envisioned something like that and trying to help put it together. And to see how well it went off and how, how overwhelmingly positive the response was, it was fantastic. Well, you guys did a really good job with that. I want to say, like, you go to a lot of these festivals. They're not always, the, sometimes they're not the best organized. You know, Brewfest here is great, and you guys did a really good job with Medina Beer Fest. Well, thank you, Dean. I, I, I really appreciate it. It was, it, it was a great experience for me because it was really the first time where I, offer, I was able to offer some, you know, constructive and practical advice on how to make it, you know, make it what it was. And right. like I say, to, to see it come together exactly as you envision it, uh, I, you know, I got to shout out Matt Wiederhold at Main Street Medina and, and everybody there that really, they took, our, they took our advice and just said, you know, we understand how it is putting events together, but you understand beer and you understand what the people that are coming to events like this really want to do and want to enjoy. And that's how we, that's how we pulled it off. We yeah. said, let's, let's focus this on local brewing, what, what, what is so great about Northern Ohio, and, and we're doing the same thing here pretty right. much. So. Uh, yeah, it was it was a fantastic was a, experience, a and I'm really looking forward to, uh, to to next year's event. And uh, we may have some good news on that in the not too distant future. Well, keep me up to date. We'll keep uh, we'll keep blasting that out so people can get out to that next year. It was a lot of fun. Um, and so, talk to the people a little bit about what Craft Beer Journeys is. Also, give people what your contact info is, your website, and all that. So, if people want to book a, a journey through you, they can go ahead and do that. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, let's say it's Craft Beer Journeys, and it's craftbeerjourneys.com is the website. Uh, you email me at Irwin, I-R-W-I-N, at craftbeerjourneys.com, and I'm always accessible through email at almost any time of the day or night. Uh, we specialize in beer-themed tours of Western Europe at this point. Eventually, we'll be doing tours around the U.S. as well. Uh, but it's basically the type of event we're having today, but you, do, you get to do it in amazing places like Belgium and Germany and England, Ireland, yeah. all those wonderful... You know, the, the idea I've always envisioned, again... Taking people to the places where all of these different styles that are on display at, here today and were on display in Medina were invented or perfected or developed. And you, you get yourself, uh, it changes your baseline in yeah. terms of what you understand beer to be from its, uh, basically from its or origination. You know, you go to places in Germany that have been brewing for hundreds of years in right. Belgium and England and that. And you see that, they, you know, the, the traditions that they uphold and then the variations that they're built off of those styles based on local specialties, local water, local hops, everything. It, it mirrors so much what we've done here. Of course, here in the States, we take things to their sometimes illogical extreme. Absolutely. Uh, but that's America. It's, it's not, that's, that's right. It's not necessarily a bad thing because, again, what happens is you prove to the people in Europe who used to just, you know, come over here and, and just thumb their nose at the sixth. 16 brands of lager that were available at a bar and nothing else or at the right. store and see what we can do now and they realize that we have truly turned a corner in this country and it's and it's funny if I can just add another thing you know we, craft beer has been 
in the news this week. Yeah. Because of what's happened with platform. And I am I am truly amazed at the the level of reaction in, in, in both directions, but certainly in the negative direction. It's it, it, you know we cannot it, unless you run a brewery and you have built it from scratch and you have started from literally just an idea. Right. And it's probably because you went somewhere in Europe or toured some location that made a beer that you had never had before. And you said, ah, man, that's really good. I want to see if I can do that myself. Yeah. And that's really how this industry got started. You know, I tell jokes about my dad smuggling beer back in his laundry back in the 70s when we were coming back from England because it was the only way he could have any decent beer at home right. af after a trip like that. He'd always lament going back to whichever lager he was desperately trying to <laughs> stomach at the time. But, you know, to, to know where we were at that point and to where we are now, you know, is it, does it change a company's profile? Sure it does. Um, is, is, there, is there the occasional, I'd say, sort of misleading of what a, what a product specifically is because of who makes it or where it's made? I'm, I'm always more concerned about where a beer comes from than who's actually making it because we all know making good beer is pretty much more of a successful chemistry experiment yeah. than following a recipe. Yeah. And when you when you have variations on that, we all know. I mean, the water is the most almost the most important thing in beer right. because we all know beer is ninety plus percent water. So, for companies that I always say, a, a company gets to a point in its development where it either it maxes out where it's at and says, you know, you, if you're within a couple hundred miles of my location, you can enjoy my beer. Yeah. Or they spread out and they go build another facility on the other side of the country or someplace else, or they acquire a defunct one and say, well, we'll make it, make that our place now. Uh, and that's okay, too. You know, I say there's a quality control question that comes up when you are using water from another source. Yeah. And I don't care how well you purify it, adjust it, everything else like that. I mean, if you're changing the composition of the water before you start using it, then you aren't making what you originally made. Or you you have to go back to the original location right. and do the same thing. The the last one then is that you and again I hate to use the derogatory term of sell out, but I'm just using it in context of maxing out, yeah. spreading out, or selling out. You sell out to someone who has promised you a lot of money and the ability to distribute your product to a much larger audience. And if that is your best business decision, I, who am I to argue with that? Yeah, it's your business. I would I would you know, I only caution people as you see as companies are absorbed by the big guns that your days of being able to throw 14 different types of beer that tastes like your favorite breakfast cereal right. or Girl Scout cookie, uh, those days are going to end pretty yeah. quick because that's not what they're in business for. The yeah. big guns are in business for one thing and one thing only, and that's to make profitable money on the products they sell. And you know, if they determine that one of your products isn't cutting it, they're going to cut it from the, your production line very quickly. Yeah. So I hope they've taken that into account and... I wish them nothing but success, and I know a lot of people down here don't. Um, I, it's, I'm, I'm kind of impressed that they actually showed up today, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but I haven't seen any fist fights break out down that way well, yet, that's, so that's all it matters. shouldn't be. Because, again, folks, it's beer. Yeah. It's beer. We, we are not, we're not launching missiles here. It's we're not, not, like we're not collapsing an economy. Town. It's beer. And if, you, if you're not a fan of their beer, hey, there's 49 others to try here. Absolutely. So. So when somebody books a tour with you, what is, what is it that they're getting? Like, where what is it that they do? Is our it based trips, on certain things? Our, tr our trips, uh, we really have fashioned these things to be, A, very unique. We don't, you know, we say, you know, it's going to be like, well, if I use company X or Y or Z, I'm going to get the same thing. No, you're not. Uh, we contract with suppliers that get you very specific sort of VIP or backdoor access to places that don't offer it to the general public. And we take great pride in that. We do that by scheduling what we call small group tours, 16 to 20 to 24 people. Okay. So they devote, when you, when you visit a facility, whether it's a hop farm in Germany or you're doing a pub crawl through Amsterdam or whatever, uh, going through visiting uh, places up in the, in, 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 uh, in the Cotswolds in England, you know, they're giving all of their attention to you and your group, and you get to feel like a true VIP from, in every step of the way. Uh, the, the food, we, you know, we pick out pubs and beer cafes and uh, locations that are 
purpose built to provide you the best possible experience you can. That's, that's, that's always the goal of a trip. Uh, we never want someone to come back and say, oh, I wish I hadn't gone on that trip. Right. You know, if you've taken a vacation of a lifetime, which is what we want these experiences to be, we want these to be bonding experiences, uh, and you bond over beer, and we see it every day, and, um, you know, for various reasons and in yeah. various places. But you, there's another level, there's almost a next level bonding experience that happens when you are talking about beer with someone who works in a Belgian monastery and, and they've been brewing on the same site for 600 years. Yeah. You really can get a next level feel for what goes into the craft and how devoted they are to it. And you're going to come back with a, a whole new f appreciation of what it takes to make good beer and what it takes to share that love with other people to get them as passionate about beer as you are. Yeah, and you feel a little bit more connected with that beer at the end of the day, too. Like, when right. you're drinking it, it you, you remember those trips that you had. You remember the time, like, oh, I got to go to the place where the hops actually come from for this beer and got to see those guys and how those people do it. When you break it down to its its basic level like that, yeah, it, you bond at a totally different level. And that's one of the things I try to emphasize when I talk to brewers themselves, when I talk to some of these brewers um, and, you know, they kind of look at me a little strange when the first thing I suggest is take them, take 20 people away from your place right. and travel thousands of miles away. Correct. Yeah, but there's a method, there is a method to the madness. And as I, as I explained to them and I explained to your audience, there's a twofold benefit to this. There's a short-term benefit in that whatever group you take, when they come back, they are going to be your most passionate fans. Yep. They're going to be the ones that are going to help spread the word and say, look, this guy is making beer the way it was made in in Europe hundreds of years ago, he absolutely is nailing the style. You really need to come and check him out. And then beyond that, the long-term vision for both me and for brewers in this area would be, I eventually want to be able to bring folks from Europe and other parts of the world here and do beer nice. tours here in the U.S. And you can't possibly do a good beer tour of the U.S. in a week or two. You, you, oh, you could no. take a year you and do it. You couldn't even do that in Ohio. Exactly. So you're exactly right. So the idea would be regional tours where we bring people, we bring them into Detroit, and we do southeast Michigan, northern Ohio. We bring them into Cincinnati, and we do northern Kentucky, southern Ohio, nice. southeast Indiana. We bring them into Chicago and do Wisconsin and yeah. that sort of I mean, there's so many itineraries that can be easily built through the same ideas, through the, thing, through the same concept. And as we start bringing people over from Europe, these brewers especially, that it, we, we build a bonding relationship with them, when they come over here, I'm going to be bringing them to your brewery, yeah, sir or ma'am, and they're going to be bringing their group with them, and that's where the long-term benefit. And they're going to say, hey, they know somebody that's going to northern Ohio. Oh, well, you've got to stop in at this brewery because yeah. he's doing a great job. We, we prove to the world that we have evolved beyond the mass loggers that we existed and a lot on of, for years. And sorry to interrupt, no, I apologize. Okay. And a lot of these cities too, you know, have the you know, a lot of European immigrants came here and and settled in these towns. And so there's gonna be a little bit of their own history kind of tied into some of these tours because you'll get places that have that they want to keep that that culture about them and, and put it into their beer. And that's a really cool idea. It it, it it's amazing when you talk about certain neighborhoods in, in, or certain cities that were built. You know, everybody knows Cincinnati has a huge German component. There's the big uh, Slovak component in, in Cleveland. Uh, you know, the Italian section in Detroit or in Chicago. And, of course, you know, every city seems to have a Chinatown of some description. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you think of those things. And it, we don't uh, – Chinese restaurant, you know, Chinese food, there's, there's, that's a simple concept. Indian food is the same way, but in England. Right. In England, every town has at least two or three Indian takeout restaurants, the way we have two or three Chinese restaurants. It's just that culture is embedded in the culture of the adopted country. And we have done such an amazing job over the 200 plus years of assimilating a lot of the cultures. And, and, that, and again, the brewing, you know, everybody brought their beer with them. Right. British did it, the Germans did it, the Irish did it. Um, Eastern Europeans do it, and, and they continue to do it. And we thank them for it. We are very grateful. Absolutely. And then we create ideas, and we come up with stuff that's uniquely American, and there's nothing wrong with that either. Absolutely. You know, it just there's a little bit more out there. It just gives you a chance to try something new, try something different. The world is an amazing place, and sometimes we, you have to look at it from that 30,000-foot view yeah. to realize that, you know, we, we love to think here in America that we've got everything we need. And in many cases we do, but it's there. There is no harm in, and there is only uh, pleasure and, and excitement and joy from my standpoint. Um, and I have the benefit of having spent much of my childhood visiting another country because it's where my family is. 
to understand different viewpoints. I mean, it really is how you learn and how people grow and understand. Uh, you know, and I, bonding over beer just seemed to be a logical extension of that yeah, idea. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it gets you out of your your little area of the world. Oh, good man. We got Jason over here stopping by, saying hey from the Brew Fest. He, um, yeah, he's signing up for my next tour, by the way. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> um, but you know, you get out of your little bubble, and you get to go and see places and. And as soon as, if you haven't been there, like, you're lucky enough to have grown up and have taken these trips and stuff, but not everybody is that lucky. I, I haven't gotten to go on a ton of uh, overseas trips. I would love to get out of my bubble and meet these people and see, and just get that connection that I wouldn't normally get if just staying here in Ohio. You, you, just the opportunity to talk to people that you would never otherwise get to talk to and understand, you know, what it is that makes us the same and what it is that makes us different and figuring out perspectives on on life and on beer and on what it is to you know there's just different vibes there are different uh sensations and there's a different atmosphere to you know we walk around this really nice venue here in lorraine uh enjoying ourselves and everybody appears to be having a good time oh yeah and to walk around a little village in, in Germany on the Rhine River doing the same thing. Yeah. It's, you know, it's the same thing, but with different people. The result is so different. Yeah. And uh, that's the sort of experience that I, I really encourage people, even if you don't do it as a beer theme tour with me, but right. to get out and, and do that somehow, some way. Uh, broaden, your, it's, it broaden your horizons. It sounds like a cliche, but it, there's, there's truth behind it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, for people, again, to give out your info, the website, uh, email address, and how they can contact it you. Is, it is craftbeerjourneys.com. Craftbeerjourneys, all one word, dot com. Irwin, I-R-W-I-N, at craftbeerjourneys.com is how you get a hold of me. And like I say, I am happy to answer questions, uh, discuss itineraries. Um, I'm going to be on vacation in a couple weeks in Florida where I'm going to be upgrading the website, nice. adding some stuff on there. So we'll have all the particulars of our two trips for next year, one to Belgium. Uh, one of them is going to be a, where we do two nights in Munich for Oktoberfest and then Ooh. combine it with a Rhine River cruise down to Amsterdam. Oh, that's going to be, be absolutely amazing. So we'll be finalizing that itinerary. That'll be up on the website within the next couple of weeks. Dude, Erwin, thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate you being here and anything we can do for you in the future, just let me yeah, know. I appreciate the support and, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Absolutely. Keep spreading that word. And you too, man. You're doing a lot of great stuff. Erwin really knows his beer. If there's anybody you want to go on a trip with and learn and talk about beer, it's Erwin. And this dude really knows his stuff. So definitely get out to craftbeerjourneys.com and, and check that out and get, get on booking a flight and booking a tour and all that. Great. I really, uh, really can't recommend them enough. Thank Enjoy you, the rest of your day, and uh, we'll be checking back in soon here at Brewfest Waterfront District 6. All right, welcome back. I'm here with Mark Young of Two Bandits Brewing. Uh, you are out of Hicksville, Ohio. You guys were just telling me you guys started and brewed on a one-barrel system for two years? Yeah, Dean, that, that's exactly right. Um, for the first two years of our life, um, we, we survived tooth and nail off of a single barrel. Um, the kettles were affectionately known as Bertha and Helga, <laughs> and um, the kettles are still in use at, at our brewery um, oh, nice. as, as R&D, uh, Skunk Works, when we're, we're working to do um, very unique, uh, very one-off beers, uh, Bertha and Helga still fire up for those well, purposes. That's really cool. That give, that's nice to have like the, the system you started on still at the place. It's like, you know, if you go into Great Lakes, they still have their original brew system that they still do brewing on. And, you know, you feel a little connection to it as a consumer. And I can only imagine as the brewer, and you know, actually doing doing the brewing on that old system and getting the nostalgia factor for it. What was your inspiration to start Two Bandits? And, and where you guys, so you guys, you also said, are the furthest west brewery in the state of Ohio. Yes, indeed. Uh, by Google definition, we, we hold that title. Um, so to answer the first question, I guess what inspired us was um, life. Uh, my business partner, Bob Garza, and myself uh, both absolutely hated our day jobs. Um, okay. We're both lab rats by definition. Okay. So obviously that bodes well for producing a good quality craft. Um, and um, I was personally miserable. Okay. My wife knew this and she says, you know, you're 44 years old. You need to find something that's going to make you happy. Yeah. Um, so my background is in business management and marketing. Okay. And um, she would said that everything that I've ever done in my life has led me to this moment. And um, she, my wife, and Bob worked together. Oh, okay. And he was homebrewing for roughly eight years prior to us 
pushing the red button on this roller coaster ride. Or nice. green button, I guess yeah. I should say. And uh, so he used to trade a six-pack of his beer for a dozen of my wife's cookies. Oh, nice. And that's kind of how it all started. And um, I sat down with him one day, and I said, you know, Bob, I, 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 I truly believe that, that your beer is, is good enough to sell. I really do. I said, um, I'm working on an idea. I said, and if you have a little faith in, in what you're doing and a little trust in me, I said, I think we can do this. And yeah. That was... Well, four years ago, and nice. the, the brewery's been up and rocking for two and a half, and um, we just graduated to a seven barrel. Oh, um, that's awesome! Indeed, indeed, we have our brew pub uh, that that rocks. You know, uh, on the weekends, um, it's usually standing room only, so we're, we're, we're very blessed. Oh, that's great! And what are you guys pouring here today? So uh, we brought four of our beers today. Uh, we brought um, the Black Shadow, which is uh, our chocolate milk stout. It's Hawaiian Ooh. Kona coffee. Uh, hazelnut and real uh, chalaka chocolate. It's uh, creamy, it's rich, but it's actually uh, very easy to drink, more like a porter. Okay. Uh, we brought our Thickest Thieves. It's our Blood Orange Milkshake IPA. Nice. Drinks like a creamsicle, real uh, Blood Orange Puree. Very we brought, popular style now. It, it is becoming so, indeed. Uh, very, very drinkable. Um, yeah. A little bit of lactose, it gives a little bit of frothiness, beautiful body. Um, we brought our Checkmate, which is uh, a Czech recipe Pilsner. Nice. So it differentiates from American Pilsner as opposed to a little more sourness. This is a little more sweetness, a little bit of almost a black licorice finish to it. Okay. Um, very, very easy to drink. And then last, but certainly nowhere least, uh, we brought um, the Killer Bee, which is our Goldenrod honey-infused IPA. Nice. Uh, goes with everything, burgers, wings, salads. Um, it's, just, it's just a great drinker. It's complex. Um, it's very decadent. I heard uh, I heard a gentleman who was trying that one uh, give some really good compliments on it. And you know, sometimes when you brew honey into a beer, you don't always taste it. And he said you actually got the flavor of it yeah. actually present in the beer. That's the not too ride. much. The nice balance to it, and that's that's a really cool. That's it's always good to hear stuff like that. Thank you. you. Always hear compliments from from the people who are just trying it. And is this your first time at Brewfest? This is our first time here at Brewfest. Um, we were invited. Uh, by Chris and Howard, mm -hmm. uh, literally just a month ago. Okay, um, and and admittedly, we had never heard of it uh, out there in the sticks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but uh, I have to say, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful venue. It's a beautiful festival. Um, the people, the rain are welcoming. It's it's just absolutely fantastic. We'll certainly be back. Yeah, this is uh, this is my second time here. Uh, only the first time actually doing the podcast live from here. But uh, last year, I was just walking around like everybody else, enjoying the beer. And one of the fi things I found out about this place is you, people don't get too crazy here. It's, it, people are here to enjoy the beer Indeed. and not get too, you know, some festivals people got to get carried out. And it's just it's, it's too much. Yeah, yeah. It's just not fun. And it's not what the, the festivals are really about. This is such a good one. Uh, I didn't get so I didn't get to try you guys last year. I'm going to get over there and try you guys here in just a second. And no problem. I'm really looking forward to trying your, your beer and. Um, I, I, it's so much, uh, so much great things going on for you guys. I'm really happy to hear that. Thank and, you, Dean. Uh, you know, Ohio's got a great craft beer scene right now, and it's, it's just love. I love seeing it grow, and I love seeing places that, you know, like you who started on a one barrel system. Now you're on a seven, and you're, you're just going to keep growing, man. And I, I, is there a possibility of some cans coming out soon? Uh, canning is uh, actually on the horizon. Um, we have hopes if, uh, if uh, we can get everything in order. Uh, we want to start having cans out for the Christmas season. That'd be nice. Um, we, we have um, uh, approximately 10 uh, distributors right now screaming for packaged product. Okay. So we have a waiting market. It's just getting it done. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, so if anybody wants to come out and visit you uh, out in Hicksville, how can people find you? Okay. So it's, it's very, very simple. We're very accessible. We're pretty much anywhere you want to be. We're on a TripAdvisor. We're on Google+, uh, obviously Facebook and Instagram. Or you can contact us through our website, twobanditsbrewing.com. And usually I'm the one that personally answers all of those in inquiries. So Very I, cool. I look forward to speaking with everybody. Yeah, please send out some info. Get out to uh, Two Bandits and check them out. You guys are doing some really great stuff. And you guys work locally with charities and stuff, too. You're doing a lot of giving back. And that's what I love to see out of these breweries. And uh, it just see it's nice to see you guys doing all that. So thank you guys very much for that. Dean, thank you for letting me be on your podcast. Oh, anytime. And if you ever want to do a full feature on the show, please just let me know. I'll be glad to come out to you guys. Uh, I'd love that. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. We'll Cheers. talk off air. Enjoy the rest of your yep. day and uh, have some beer. All right. Much like Adam Sandler's Toll Booth Willie, I'm coming out of the booth. 
and I am walking around checking out the breweries here at Brewfest Waterfront District 6. We got a lot of stuff. It's a really nice day. I haven't gotten out a lot, checking out some of the stuff, seeing what all's out here. Oh, what's up, Lee? What's up, Dan? Oh, I can't complain. Just doing the show. Dan Joswick, everybody. Hey, hey. Saucy Brews here. What are you guys pouring? Uh, we got our core stuff, so the habitual ASAP, love you, bye. And then we're pouring our new seasonal, the Fest Beer, today. Ooh, nice. I'll be stopping by for that one. I love Fest Beers, man. One of my favorite styles. This is delicious, man. Super. All your beers is. Yeah. Are. All they is. Yeah. All they is. I've had a beer. I've had a beer. I've had a couple. It's it's just that time of day. I'm drinking four ounces at a time, and I'm getting getting there. I live. That's how I live my life, man, four ounces at a time. Dan, thank you so much. I'll let you get going. I know you guys are really busy today. Lee, thank you so much. Lee from Cavalier Distributing, who distributes Saucy Brew Works in Lorain County, which is where we physically are right now. So hit up Lee. He's got a lot of good stuff at uh, Cavalier. A lot of good stuff. All right. I am here at Avon Brewing Company's booth. I'm enjoying the ugly IPA. I had to actually have a sip. I can't have this in my hand and not drink it. I'm with Matthias Hauk, the uh, brewmaster for Avon Brewing Company. How's it going? Man, we're doing great. What a beautiful day today. You know, Howard and crew here at the uh, Brewfest Waterfront District to put on one of the best brew fests that we've ever been to. We go to quite a bit of them. Um, it's packed. Weather's beautiful. There's so many wonderful um, craft breweries here, local, um, and not just local, but also regional. And they actually brought their, some of their brewers and reps here today because they know this is a quality uh, place to be. Food's great. Music's great. We're having a good time. And, you know, a lot of festivals, people get a little rowdy and can be a little, uh, you know, go overboard. But, you know, Brewfest, it never seems that way here. It doesn't. It's just a, it's a large area, and it's outside. A lot of them are inside. It's, it's outside venue. Um, we've been here. This is our fourth year, and not one time we've ever had a bad day. So it's just a, it's a, it's a wonderful thing. It's, again, lots of food options. Um, you know, they, they make Lorraine proud. So Lorraine County, uh, Lorraine uh, does it right. So we're excited about being here. We got some good beers today. We brought our Ugly. It's about two days old. So as you taste it, it, it is fresh. There's a lot of great fresh fruit in there. Um, Barista is pretty fresh. Our King Coconut's also fresh too. So a lot of great fresh toasted coconut today. So for some of our favorites, uh, they do well here. It shows that they, they uh, kind of fit the mold for everybody. Wants to see the dark beer or coffee blonde or then an ipa so Absolutely. and uh real quick before we head out how's everything going down at medina medina is exciting um they are medina in general the city is excited about our our, our expansion our growth uh, they're pushing through a, a lot of the work we already have our floors done our, our floor drains are in our curb for the brewery is already done uh the bars roughed in uh it's just an exciting thing to see how fast it's happening um we, we really are excited about being part of Medina and expanding our brand into Medina County and Medina proper. Being a part of the, the exchange there um, south of the square is really cool. Um, we just love the fact that we're going to be able to share our brand and our family with people in Medina. Uh, it's really cool. And uh, until then, you know, you can always get out and get Avon's beers at Avon Brewing Company on the corner of 611 and 254 in Avon. You guys are doing some great food, great beer out there. Uh, you know, anything else you guys want to get out about Avon today? So it's not necessarily common knowledge yet, but uh, we'll be soon. You know, last year we had some really cool things. We are a brew pub, and my brother's our chef, and, and we, just this year again, he won Best Chef in Lorraine County. Um, we got the best restaurant in Lorraine County two years in a row, which is a ridiculous statement. Uh, best casual dining and best bar food. So we've got the, the gamut, 21 beers on tap, best bar food, casual dining, and best restaurant in Lorraine County. We're just we're stoked to be around. We love this beer culture. We love um, everybody who shows up and participates in, in our family. And, and same with you and, and your family. We love your mom and dad. And... and uh, it's just exciting to be to be a, a part of what's going on here in Lorraine County and our beer, and um, we love it. We love it. Absolutely. You guys are getting a long line. I'll let you get back to work uh, pouring these beers. Thank you, Matthias, for being here. Thanks, Steve. We appreciate it. Love you guys. All right. I'm walking around the uh, Brewfest Waterfront District. I have come across two Lorraine County legends, the Smith brothers, Tom and Matt Smith, or is it Matt and Tom? Who came first? Thank you. I'm Tom Smith. 
And I'm Matt Smith, his baby brother. One year apart. I was actually born on Tom's birthday. You guys share a birthday, but My different days. Is they different. call that Irish twins. Yes, from my absolutely. Of that. Uh, Tom was born maybe November. That's why we like good Irish stout. <laughs> you know, that might be part of it. I Probably. don't know. Uh, he, he was born November twenty third, nineteen fifty eight. I crashed the party on November twenty third, nineteen fifty nine, and we've been drinking ever since. <laughs> so, well, you guys are legends around Lorain County. Uh, every time I go into a brewery and I'm like, do you guys know Matt and Tom? They're like, yeah, we know Matt and Tom. What's been your favorite so far today, without having to necessarily say somebody's bad, who, what's been some of the standouts? Let's, let's put it that way. Let's put, what's been some of the standouts for you guys? Let, Tom, let's start with you. Okay, well, obviously our Lorraine County brewers are the best. Yes. No question, we enjoy all of our Lorraine County brewers' beer. But Matt and I decided, let, let, let's be a little different Let, let's go around and try out some other beers and one of the standouts are the two bandits yes which are uh, uh hill H- hicksville, hicksville ohio, ohio which is kind of, it's down by ohio northern eight ohio ohio, ohio indiana border you know and i just finished one of their beers called the queen bee which was excellent uh i don't know which style you had earlier matt but i actually drank enough that I don't remember. No, so, <laughs> good problem to have. Point that was good. <laughs> so another one that, that kind of stood out, and they're, they're just right down the line here. They're out of uh, Canton, the Royal Docks. Oh, yeah. They had a, uh, a white stout. Nice. And uh, that that kind of stood out as a, as a good one for me. And I see you're, you're sampling one as well. I have no idea what it is. Mark Somebody just handed, handed it to me. It to you you hand me a beer, I'm going to drink it. Right, right. Now, Matt, I don't know if you had any that struck you. Well, well, I will reiterate what Tom said. The Lorraine County Brewers, you know, Matthias Houck of Avon Brewing Company, Jerome Moore of the Railroad Brewing Company, Chris Camboris of the Bastille, all wonderful. Yeah, Aaron Sheckle, Howard Ross of Franklin Brewing and Elyria. And, and, yeah, yeah, and, 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 we, and, and we've been drinking their beers today, but we've been... Twisting our arms to try different things, and there's like, well, the one right here, uh, Shorts Brewing Company out of Traverse City, Michigan, and their logo is Life is Shorts, drink it while you're here. Well, bottoms up to that, and again, we were drinking some of their beers, excellent. It's and and whoever's in charge of the Lorraine Port Authority, I'm not sure who, who that is, but thank you. And, you know, and obviously Franklin Brewing put this together six years ago. And we've been coming since the incipient start of this, and we enjoy it. And this is just a great thing, not only for Loring County, but I'm sure there's people that are here from all over northeast Ohio and even further possibly. And, and it, it, I, I saw someone with a T-shirt I thought was so cool. I never saw it before. It says, Beer Connects People. Nice. And, and I'm like, I go to Tom, we hoisted our beers and toasted and said, so true, you know, so yeah. true. Absolutely. And, and it's, just, it's just a great thing. Absolutely. You know, and and well, I mean, that's our, that's our overview, but I have an empty You have glass, an empty cup. So that's not good. Oh, Both that. of you do. Oh, I was going to yeah. cheers you, but you can't cheers on an empty glass. <laughs> we are so go raise the bridge and get a beer and enjoy the rest of your day. Tom, thank you so much. Thank you. Matt, thank you so much. Dean, and thank you. I, and for every listener out there, Dean's podcast, Kick Ass. And there's nothing better. I'm kicked back in my beer garden at home. I got a fresh growler from Heinen's, sitting there drinking it with my four golden retrievers running around, and I'm listening to a Dean Zarbaugh podcast. I mean, life doesn't get much better than that. So, Matt, thank you so much for your time. Thank you again for listening. Tom, thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Go get some good beers and Fill up. You guys need, you're thirsty. I get it. I will get out of your way. Go fill up. Enjoy. And we'll put a plug in for Uber because we Ubered here and we're Ubering back. Today's show brought to you by Uber. Yeah. Have a good one, guys. All right. I am here with Matt Van Warmer. How are you, sir? Doing great. Having a great time out here at uh, Brewfest Water District, Waterfront District. You've had a couple. It's all good. Uh, you were. Nine. Well, at least you can still count how many. I can't. Uh, you're one of uh, the founding fathers over at uh, Franklin Brewing Company. Uh, what have you been drinking today? What have you been enjoying? So I have had a lot of stuff. I have avoided certain... Uh, gotcha. Yep. 
And uh, I'll tell you what, I finally got to have the rusty rail, fool's gold. The peanut butter. The peanut butter hefeweizen. I believe it. I think it was you that told me about it. Now that I'm we thinking used to about have it. it on tap. And uh, that was mind blowing. It's one of their best Amazing. Beers. One of their best beers. One of the best beers here, probably. Yeah. Um, now, right now, I'm drinking the. Uh, was it Cumulo Nimbus? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nimbus? yeah. Yeah. Um, Seven after, Suns doing some really good stuff. Seven Suns great. Um, asked him where they're available up here. It turns out. Um, yeah, Heinen's has you, uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, the lemongrass wit was yes, very I good, too. To I, you got to try it. It's very good. It. Very nice, slight, subtle pepper hit at the end. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what, you know, this has been a how, – how many years have you been coming now? You know what? This is the first time I've been able to come. Really? Yep. I've, I've known Chris Nabokowski for several years. We worked together at a restaurant back in the day. And every year, like, something has been happening this exact weekend. And this year I was like, babe, August 10th, I am not available. Yeah. And we worked it out. She's here, too, drinking a bunch nice. of beers. Some nice ciders, too. Yeah. Um, there's a new cider house going in Ohio City. Uh, Arsenal. Nice. Oh, I haven't tried them yet. Arsenal, you got to try the ginger something cider. All right. It's the one with ginger in it. Yeah. It's real good. That sounds really good. I, if you haven't tried uh, the Redhead Cider House Blackberry Shandy, try that. Yeah. Is it sweet? It, it's got a, for somebody who doesn't like shandies usually or sweeter ciders, I can crush it. Okay. Legitimately. And they they did it on tap. We had it on tap at work. Okay. And a guy came in right off the bat and did a 128-ounce growler of it. That's a large growler. That's I've not seen growl. one of those. I hadn't either until that guy came in. He had a party or was just having a really bad day. Well, he has one of those nice Growler Works growlers. Uh, today's show brought to you by Growler Works, uh, where uh, you uh, right it's there. got oh there you go uh, where you got um, uh, the, he's got the CO two thing in it yeah. so that you can oh, basically okay. make it like That's a little right. keg. Very cool. Uh, gentleman here from Arsenal. I'm Dean from the Tap Room Exclusive Podcast. I talk to people about beers ciders all that kind of stuff uh matt here was just telling me about you guys uh oh i i'm i'm a little unfamiliar with you guys no offense uh i would like to get over there and try you guys um uh, coming into the area opening up a tap room in uh ohio city here in about two months oh nice that's a great place for you guys to be opening it's a that's a beer city pretty much uh tell the people a little bit about what arsenal is and what kind of stuff you guys do uh, well, we're a, uh, a hard cider, and uh, we make hard ciders, fruit wines, and meads. Uh, we're based out of Pittsburgh, uh, Lawrenceville specifically. We've since expanded uh, out as far as uh, Cleveland and Philly and a lot of places in between. And, uh, yeah, we just focus on premium product, uh, all locally sourced apples for our apple ciders, uh, all real ingredients. We press the ginger for our ginger that he was talking about. So good. So good. Yeah. yeah That's so cool. That we get... Uh, so I work at, at Heinen's in Avon. I, I sell beer and wine to people uh, for a living. And I get a lot of people coming in who want ciders but are looking for something that isn't Angry Orchard because it's too sweet and all this stuff. And I love sending people to a places like you guys who are locally. So if, as soon as I tell somebody, hey, they're getting their apples locally, they're like, let me try these guys. I would like to. And like for you guys as a cider house fantastic idea to do that and and what was the what was your goal basically with doing everything locally um well i'm not the guy to talk to about that uh, i've been with the company for about four years we've been in the business uh for about nine i work uh in the in the winery gotcha. yeah but uh, i don't know we just established relationships with local farmers to make sure we're getting everything as fresh and as real as is possible i mean I, I know sometimes i have to like wait while they're pressing it when we're actually going to pick it up the juice yeah. That, that's crazy, but you know, uh, Matt gives uh, very high regards to you guys. I can't wait to get over there and try you guys out. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll be uh, really excited to hear what you think. Absolutely, I'll be swinging by soon. Let you get back to work. Go pour some beers, and thank you so much for your time. All right, thank you. Enjoy your day. I will be getting over there for sure. Um, so you guys, so you're liking the rusty rail, the uh, the the. the is here. This yeah, Bookhouse is here. Yeah, Bookhouse Map IPA is. Uh, it's really hop forward with a nice malt backbone. Like, I mean, if you if that's the kind of IPA you like, the Centennial Map is out of this world. It's nice. funny. I was telling them we they weren't on the passport last year, right. but we went in there and it was like, hey, do you have a stamp? And I was like, yeah. Flip to the back page. Boom, Bookhouse stamp nice. right in the back. And they they got they got a really good crew over there. Their uh, their mom and dad are handling the pouring right now oh, nice. uh, because they're they're great parents supporting their kids' dreams, that kind of thing. And I love that. I mean, I've always been a guy that loves local craft um 
just really like dedicated beer. Like you have that love to make a beer that's just delicious that people are going to enjoy. Like for instance, the Armonica Blonde yeah. from Franklin, that Honey Basil Blonde. Oh, yeah. I mean, full disclosure, I'm a founding father. Yeah. Love those guys. Sad they're moving to Medina. Excited for them for the opportunity, but. Um, Everybody's got to grow. Everybody's got to grow. That's the goal, you know. And, I mean, a lot of good beers out there. Wish Brick and Barrel was here. Uh, rest in peace to Rob Young, uh, one of the former bartenders there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's been a great day here. I got a few tickets left. Definitely got to try a couple more beers before heading home. Absolutely. I'll let you get back doing that. Matt, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. I'm going to fist bump. Uh, well, I don't have anything. Well, I got a little bit. It's not bad luck. Um, oh, but that was super warm. Um <laughs> Oh, that was Stop the, the that was the, that was the mixture of uh, like the last four I just had. Uh, Matt, thank you so much. You've been a su- huge uh, supporter of me, and I really appreciate that. Enjoy the rest of your day. Right, go tap What's up, everybody? I'm here with Molly. Molly works at Smash Food Truck on Fridays. You said? Yeah, on Fridays at Rocket on the River. So Smash is a food truck here at the Brewfest Waterfront District. Yes. What kind of food do you guys do? We do tacos. We do nachos, macaroni and cheese. It all depends on our mood for the night. What do you guys put, have in here today? Nachos. Nice. Yes, the Good walking choice. taco nacho. Perfect choice. So amazing. I've heard a lot of people, most people get a walking taco and it's just like a little bleh. Oh, and no. you guys... Somebody came over and complimented how you guys do your walking tacos. So it's I got to say, but it's it worth, is worth it. Every penny, I promise you that. And you will not go hungry when you eat our food. Absolutely. It's called the world's greatest food truck for a reason. Amen. So what are you drinking right now? I don't even know what I'm There's what been so I many today. Oktoberfest. Oh, yeah. Sibling rivalry. Oh, yeah. Solid one. Oktoberfest. Yes, very good. I had that one earlier. Yeah. What do you like about it? Well, I am obsessed with Oktoberfests and Reds. Like that's first of all, I love the season of fall. Me too. And I mean, this just it puts you in a good mood. You know, it, it does. Football season, go Browns. Absolutely. Go Browns. Shotgun formation. Let's shotgun some beer. All well, right. Not well, necessarily. I was gonna say you're empty, buddy. I'll I am your empty. empty glass, though. I'll Here do some bad luck. There you go. All right. Yeah, I. You know, I found that getting out of the booth is great, but at the same time, then. I miss everybody. Uh, I, I <laughs> so, believe that. So I've, I've been leaving the booth to go get beer, but then everybody comes over when I'm gone. So it's like, oh, well, I just messed up my show. You just need to go to your neighbors and say, fill up my cup. That's what I've been doing. Yeah, That's absolutely. basically what I've been doing. And you know what? You got good, you got good breweries around you. I do. Yeah. Is this your first time here? No, this is actually, I think, my fourth. Nice. My fourth year. Going my second. Nice. I didn't broadcast from here last year, but I'm doing it this year. Uh, what's your favorite thing about... Brewfest Waterfront District. Oh, it is so fun, you know, to try all the different types of beer, and you get to see all these people that you went to school with. I'm from Lorraine. Nice. So, um, yes, Admiral King, Westside. There you go. Um, and so you get to see all your old friends, have a drink with them. There's nothing better than that. Yeah. This is, I, I've been telling everybody, this is one of the best festivals around. People don't get too out of control here. No, absolutely not. And you don't, you know, like sometimes you go to certain festivals and they're pouring heavy beers. And you're getting people carried out. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's a bad look. Right. That's not a good look. But everybody here at Brewfest Waterfront District seems so well behaved. Everybody wants to be able to come in and just enjoy their beer and and not get, you know, messy. Exactly. And, and that's what I love about this place. Right. We don't have that kind of thing. Everybody's just chill. They're drinking their beer. Oh, yeah. And and concerts on Friday nights are kind of similar. Oh, nice. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Rocket on the River. Yeah, absolutely. That's Very similar. Right. Um, it's always... it's. Safe, it's fun, and you, everybody's just really chill, low key, and you know, get a drink, get yeah. some food, hang out. Yeah. What's been your standout so far? My standout of the breweries. Of the breweries, I, I really like what is this? Brosh. Yeah. Brosh. They're from um, Wilmington. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah. Nice. They're I haven't really had their stuff. stuff yet, but I really want to try them. They were like my second beer. Nice. I, I mean, I'm not that far in. I'm like on number four. It's okay. <laughs> we all start somewhere. Right. But um, no, it was really good. I was, nice. I've never tried it, so I was excited. I've never had their it. stuff either. That's the fun stuff about it is, uh, you know, I've had Franklin. I've had Great Lakes. Right. I've had all these places, and I'm going to go and try their beers again because I love them. But I really like getting out and trying somebody like Brosh, mm-hmm. who I haven't tried, or two bandits right behind me over here. If you get a chance, go try them. Right. They have an orange, uh, blood orange milkshake IPA. Oh, that is to die so for. Good. It's to die for. It is. It, it's like drinking a dreamsicle. I got. I gotta go try this. That one's. They're doing some solid stuff. 
Anything else you want to add before we head out? Um, no, nope, that's about it. Just come on down to Lorraine, have a good time, hang out with us, and uh, be safe, everybody. Absolutely. Enjoy some beer and enjoy some food from Smash Food Truck. All right, I am here with the man behind today, Howard Ross. Uh, you are one of the organizers of Brewfest Waterfront District. Six years now, man. Congratulations. Isn't this crazy? I, time flies by so fast. We start planning this thing around October, maybe once a week, once a month meetings. And then as we get closer, we escalate. We do maybe every two weeks, every three weeks. And you think, you go through winter and you're like, man, it's taking forever to get right. through winter. And then, holy cow, here we are yeah. on Brewfest Day, August, second week in August already. It's Crazy. Nuts. It's nuts. I was talking to Chris Nabakowski earlier, and it was funny. He was telling me, you know, the first year you guys did this, you had 10 breweries. 10 and, little breweries. I mean, and, and it was kind of an experiment to see, will this work? Chris's father, Ron Nabakowski, is one of the original guys that founded this. Him and his uh, co-worker, Bob McDonald, from, they were working for the city at the time. Okay. And they called up me and Aaron from Franklin because at the time, Franklin was the only brewer in Lorain County. Right. So their thought was, we need to figure out a way to get people downtown Lorain. They were part of Lorain Growth, the tourism committee. Oh, nice. So their function was, hey, we need to put things on to get people downtown Lorain to see, while, yes, it needs help, it needs some work. It's a There's former a steel to town here, though. that went down. Steel industry went down, so did the city. That happens. It happens across the country. Yep. So their thought was... We need to do something to bring people down. What better way to get people gathered in an area than a beer festival? Yeah. So we met up, had a few meetings, and Aaron and I thought that we'd love to do this on our Franklin Brewing as a beer festival, but we thought at the time we're only a barrel and a half. We're too small. And the second thing is that when people come to these events, they typically want to try a variety of flavors. Correct. So the more we talked, we said, let's just start small just to see if this will even work. Right. So we picked out 10 brewers, got them to come down, a couple of food trucks, a couple of bands set up on 7th Street and said, let's see what happens. Had a successful event at the end of the day, and six years later, here we are down at Black River Landing. And you don't have a single empty place today. Like, we, that's amazing. Amazingly, we have filled every one of these slots more brewers than we have ever had. More vendors, more people, just more of every, And that's the point of this event because the best way to affect change in an area is with the volume of people. Absolutely. We could keep doing an event that brings 300 people, but is that going to affect change in this area? Not necessarily. What we're doing with thousands of people, what Bob Early's doing with Rock on the River, thousands of people, and the other events, taste the international, you have to keep bringing people into an area because out of those people, you might find a couple entrepreneurs and say, hey, I want to put a business over on Broadway. Yeah. You never know. Absolutely. You only find those people with a volume of people. Absolutely. And all it does is, you know, you're getting word out about all these great places and stuff. And with word getting out about them, word gets about, out about this. And then it's just everybody floats. Everybody rises with, a, with a, you know, a rising tide. Well, as we sit here and talk, there's a ship headed out to sea. Oh, out to perfect Lake timing. Erie. I didn't even notice that. Going on the Bastille ship. Bridge. And high tide. Like we say, raises all that? ships. How did I miss that boat? I like, look for that because giant. I think that's one of the coolest things in this region is that bridge. One of my favorite experiences, I was at a Jack White concert at uh, Nautica. And at, when you're at Nautica, you can watch the boats the go boats in and out. The boats go right behind and the so, stage. It's so funny watching people direct their attention away from Jack White. And literally the people who are maybe even like backstage, just they were literally just watching the ships go by. Like, oh, my God, we're going to get hit by this thing. It was one of the craziest. And the same thing here in Lorraine. It's everything. It's like you can reach out and touch it. Yeah. Funny story is, you know, Aaron, the owner and brewer of Franklin Brewing, we know each other because we used to play in a band. Okay. We ended up on an opening gig for Collective Soul on that stage. So we go down and do oh, wow. sound check. And I, I'm not kidding you. We're up there sound checking. Somebody walks over from the Nautica Queen and says, can you guys turn that down because we're trying to prepare for a wedding and you guys are making this racket. <laughs> and we're thinking, nah. we're, st we're trying to sound check. We're opening tonight. Uh, we'll be done in five minutes. Well, yeah. that It's not my fault you decided to have your wedding three feet away from a, a, a music venue. And I remember there's pictures of us on that stage with a ship, that very scene you just described, a ship going behind us. It's a very cool stage to play. It really is. And, and, you know, this is a really cool venue out here. I've, I've mentioned this a few times today already. 
sometimes when you put together beer festivals, people don't always behave themselves. But that is so different in Lorraine. Everybody here is behaving themselves. You don't have to have people get carried out because they're drinking too much. Everybody comes here because they want to do one thing. They want to enjoy beer and enjoy the atmosphere. And that's what amazes me about this event. And with Franklin, we we go to a lot of these events, and we've seen the people that can't even spell beer. They've had so many (laughs) when they come up and ask. They don't even care what they're asking for. They're just like, give me a beer. But here, like you said, Everybody's well behaved. It's a great demographic, and I'm so proud of our patrons. For yeah, I, it's almost like they know, like, hey, we're going to Brewfest. We better behave. Yeah, I, I don't. It's the strangest thing, and but it's it's and a very good thing. Something I've noticed, at least with this festival, more so than some of the others that I've seen around Cleveland, is the the difference in demographics of people that are here. It's not just white dudes that are here. You get a lot of different people who are wanting to enjoy craft beer. There's a nice mixture of people. Well, they say Lorraine is the international city. I mean, it's the home of International Fest for a reason. Yeah. And we have it all. I mean, I'm, I'm part Italian, part Latvian, big Hispanic demographic here, African American. I mean, it's everybody's here. Yeah. Our second act, Melissa Otero from New York, but she's Puerto Rican. She was up there saying a few songs in Spanish. Yeah. And was conversing with people. In Spanish. That's amazing. I've never seen that at any beer event no, that's we've so done cool. with at Franklin's. Yeah, so I mean, cool. that is really cool. And it's like people who are watching, maybe they picked up on just a little bit of Spanish or something that maybe they can learn just that little bit of, they maybe learned a word, even just something small like that. It's a tangible thing that they can grasp onto. Very much and so. And I really, you know, Wild Plains is on right now. Uh, they're playing some amazing music. You guys have been doing some great stuff around here as far as it's not just. Obviously, it's about the beer, but you've got great food trucks. Smash the great world's greatest food trucks here. You got Sauced. You've got all these great food trucks here. Great music. It's, it's just a great event overall. Yeah, we're. I'm just amazed by who's here. You know, I, I work personally with Ohio City Burrito. They do a lot of printing with me, so they have a shop on West 25th, which is kind of what we're trying to get happen on Broadway. Yeah. Look what's happened on West 25th over yeah. the years. There's no reason we can't have a very similar thing over on Broadway. So the thought was Ohio City Burrito is opening in Cleveland, already opening Cleveland. They're doing yeah. Lakewood. Maybe bring them out west. Bring them out west and say, hey, there's no burrito shop out here. So that people was my thought understand. process in asking them to come out. People don't understand that people out this far don't necessarily want to go into Cleveland to enjoy all this stuff. They might don't. They might just want to go as far as Elyria or as far as, you know what I mean? Like they don't want to go leave their own backyard too far that often. And if you can bring the city to them, it's a great way to everybody wins. Yeah, I mean, when you when you put a five or a ten mile radius around where we're at right now, you have a broad range of cities and obviously a very broad range of, of demographics. And it's just, you can pull people from Vermilion. We get pe- people, when we look at the ticket manifest to see where people are buying tickets from, it really is all over the place. That's, that's got to be a, a nice feather in the cap, though. It's not just people in your own backyard everybody wants to come and be a part of this yes that, that's so cool and that's what i love about craft beer is people are willing to travel for it to enjoy it to have a good time and to have an atmosphere where they feel like they belong that and, and you just nailed it why do people go where they go because they feel like they belong yeah and that's it's hard to make feel people feel like they belong in an event like this because there's just so many people but we hope that people you know, embrace this as an event they want to come to every year. I mean, there's certain things that we all do, like at this time of the year, I am doing this. Right. And we've gotten to that point with Brewfest. People go, it's the second week in August. Don't plan a vacation. I'm not going here. I'm yeah. not going there because that's the week Brewfest is. I'm going to Lorraine. Right. And that, and that's what that's another thing. You guys picked a perfect time of year. It, it's not super hot today. It's nice and warm. People are comfortable. There's a nice breeze today. It's that perfect middle of summer, really, that you guys are just nailing with this time. You know, and I don't know how we settled on the second week in August. I think the thought process way back when we first started working on this event is August is probably the safest month when it comes to downpours and storms. I mean, August, it's right. usually pretty dry. Correct. You might have a really hot day here and there or yeah. the dog days of August, like they say. But Everything, you know, in terms of rain and weather, it just seems that... 
August is the perfect month for what we do, and it, and here we are, second week in August, and it's not changing, and it, it is what it is. It's a, it's a perfect day today, man. It really is. And and to see, you know, I was here last year. I, I didn't I didn't have the setup here that I do this year. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, but I was just walking around last year, and it seems like there's even more people here from last year, and that's just it's it's great to see. It's grown, and you know, I mean, word of mouth. You know, we've been down here at the Rocket on the River shows. Bob Early has been gracious enough to let us get up on the stage and talk about Brewfest. And he's talked about it. And he was actually here with his Rocket on the River booth, just checking it out. And, you know, it's we're trying to forge partnerships and relationships with everybody that's down here. And it's only a good thing. Again, high tide rises all ships. So. Absolutely. I'm not going to – I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass here. I, I, I truly believe this. On – in this brew fest is on par with winter warmer in my opinion as far as one of the best beer festivals northeast ohio has that we're just trying to build this thing to to be one of the region's premier festivals aside from craft beer just one of the when people think of festivals we want them to think that brew fest in lorraine that's a that's a killer event yeah you know and the same thing you tell somebody hey Brewfest Waterfront District. I'm going there like, oh, yeah, I was there last year. I love that nobody was getting crazy. I love that nobody, was, you know, I, I'm able to just take my time and go to booth to booth and enjoy things at my leisure, whereas some of these pro- places get a little too crowded. And you got your elbow to elbow. It's stinky. And the, base, the great thing is you're outside here. And you're not get you're not you don't feel closed in at like some of these other festivals. Right. I mean, this venue is perfect for what we do. It really is. It's I, it, I, the first time I came here last year, I was shocked. I'm from Lorain County. I grew up here. I forgot this was here. I mean, I was I was gone for a good ten plus years, where I was living in out of state and all this stuff, where I just wasn't as as in touch with the local community as I should have been. But ever since I've been back, it's been amazing to see everything that's been going on here the rebirth of Illyria and Lorraine that that has craft beer at the forefront of that revitalization it's just been great to see exactly I mean when, again when we first started this event Franklin Brewing was the only one in Lorraine County now there's four of us and there's more coming absolutely so it's it's growing and we look at it as Cuyahoga County's doing great yeah Cleveland's doing great I guess typical Browns fan I'm a fan of the underdog yeah so that's why we're here I mean we're all volunteers this isn't this is all under a nonprofit. nobody's making any money we're all volunteers we all remain volunteers why are we here because we believe in this the mission of helping this city revitalize and to be part of something that at the end of the day when we can step back and say look at all the great stuff in Lorraine at least Brewfest was a small part of the revitalization in this area absolutely Howard, I know we're getting really busy here. I'll let you get going so that you can uh, do your job because you got a lot to do here. For people who want to get involved next year for Brewfest uh, 2020. 2020, August 8th next year. Oh, go backwards in time. Exactly. Uh, how can people get involved if they want to get involved for next year? Follow us on Facebook. It's just facebook.com forward slash Brewfest WD. The WD is for Waterfront District brewfestwd.com our website we revamped our website this year really nice looking website yeah jason our webmaster has done a great job with that and uh the whole committee i mean this isn't just me i maybe direct traffic but i can't do this without the help of jennifer and jason lynn uh becky rodriguez chris cindy gargas chris nabakowski you know his five my one regret with this whole thing is that Ron Nabokowski passed away a few years back, and he was such a champion for Lorraine, and this was his idea. Yeah. And he got to see a little bit of the growth. There's just a little part of my heart that's a little bit sad that he's not here to see how far we've come. And his voice is the one I hear because this is a difficult thing to do. It's a lot of work that goes into it, and at times there's a lot of frustration. And anytime time I think to myself, you know... Maybe I ought to pass the torch like it was passed to me from our original chairman. And then I think, if I did that, I could just hear Chris's dad, Ron, yelling at me because he was a cantankerous kind of guy. He loved yeah. to yell. And I think to myself, boy, if I, if I stop, I, Ron's just going to yell at me from yeah. the heavens. So oh, absolutely. I can't. I got, I got to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he's looking down uh, today and, and seeing what great work you guys are doing, and he's really proud of you guys. 
Um, thank you guys so much for what you do. Thank you for letting me be here this this year. Uh, it's been a blast for me. It's been really great to get the word out about the show. Howard, I really appreciate everything you're doing for Lorain County. Well, I appreciate you having even having me here to talk about this because I can blab all I want, but you're the platform. People are downloading your show, listening to your show. They're not downloading my show because, well, I don't have one. <laughs> so they're downloading Taproom Exclusive. And if, if you weren't providing that avenue for us brewers and for us to talk about Brewfest, people wouldn't hear about it. So well, we appreciate be, it right back. I wouldn't be here without you guys. So I really appreciate everything you've done for me and for the show throughout the years. And seriously, if you guys are not here today, I've had a lot of people come up and say hey to me today already, which is awesome. I had one of my very first listeners come up and tell me, hey, dude. You've grown so much since the first episode. Very and that cool. was so I had I was like, dude, can I take a selfie with you? <laughs> I don't like doing this, but I like I don't hear that that often. I people are afraid to necessarily come up and say something. They may feel like they're critiquing right, right, me right. or something. And I said, look, if I if you don't tell me what I'm doing wrong, I can't improve. Right, right. You know, it's the same thing with beer. If you taste a beer and you just don't say what's wrong with it, how is that brewery going to improve exactly, that beer? Exactly. So you need to tell me. You need to so communicate little, with me. I know what I have. constructive criticism goes a long way. Absolutely. And I've really appreciated that today. I wouldn't have had it without you guys. Thank you guys so much. Howard, get back and do your job. Thank I you right back, you. brother. I'm here with Jeff Shaw. You are the host today for Brewfest Waterfront District. Tell the people a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do here as a host. Oh, well, my name is uh, Jeff Shaw, and I'm a nationally touring stand-up comic based here in Cleveland, Ohio. And one of my best friends from high school is Howard Ross, a producer of Beer Fest. And this is the second year in a row that he asked me to host. So what I do, basically, is I greet folks in the pavilion, tell them about all the, uh, the food and all the different breweries that are available. Uh, I thank all the sponsors, tell them about any, um, any of the contests that are going on. Like we had that uh, home brew contest today, sponsored by uh, Sam Adams. And I'm basically a host, greeting people, uh, introducing the bands, making sure everybody's having a good time, uh, returning lost items. Uh, sometimes I do a few jokes, have a few like trivia contests, things like that, keep people occupied while the band's getting ready. Uh, what is it that got you into stand-up to begin with? Oh, uh, well, I was a huge fan of comedians like uh, uh, Stephen Wright oh, and, and uh, Emo Phillips oh, yeah, and George yeah. Carlin. And uh, I, I got, started acting in high school, and the teacher said, you're very funny. You should go to the Cleveland Comedy Club and try Open Mic Night. Okay. So that's what I did. I went to Open Mic Night back in 87, and I kept on going. That's so cool. I, like I said, I, I used to do stand-up myself. I actually started in, in Los Angeles, uh, which is where I was living at the time. I, I'm from here originally. But I, I miss stand I miss the power. I miss that fun being in control of everything on the stage. What, what's been your favorite part of doing stand-up? Uh, well, other than the writing and the performing, you know, I'm a very artistic. Other than the writing, the traveling and getting to go around the country. And as a beer uh, fa a fan of craft beers, um, I get to uh, go to a lot of cool breweries all around the country. I just came back from... Uh, uh, Arizona and Nevada nice. and uh, when I was in Phoenix I went to a place in Old Town Scottsdale called uh, Cheeseburgers and Brews and then I went to a microbrewery in, uh, with a great restaurant in Lake Havasu City and I went there like 15 years ago and I went to Lake Havasu so I can go back and have the same dinner I did and I don't drink much anymore because I got acid reflux you know and I travel a lot so I just like the taste of beer so I, what I do is I like to go and I get the samples and you get the flights. So I went to a place called Barley Brothers in um, Lake Havasu, and it was great. And I worked for Carnival Cruise Lines. For 10 years, I lived on their ships, and I ran a comedy program. And now Carnival Cruise Lines has their own microbreweries on all the new ships. Do they really? I never knew yeah, that. they do. So if you go on the Horizon and the Vista and then the Panorama, which comes out next year, they have uh, the Red Frog Brewery, and you can get samples, but they have like a dark, they have an amber, they have the Thirsty Frog, which they've had on all their ships for years. And uh, it's a pub experience, they have uh, bar food, and they have great uh, musicians playing there. But you also, you can come in and you can take a tour of the brewery and talk to the brewmaster. They're the only cruise lines that have a brewmaster on board. And you can go there and you can sample all the different beers and he'll show you the process. And you might even get them watch, watching the prepare a batch. 
Yeah, very cool. That's so cool. And and so last year, this year, first two years here doing uh, Brewfest Waterfront District, what is it about this festival that, that brings you back? Oh, well, hanging out with my friend, uh, I, I, basically to help him out. But it's the fact that uh, so many of my friends uh, love beer and they come here every year. So it gives me a chance to, to hang out with a lot of my friends. And also, too, the great music, the great bands. One of the, thi- one of the great secrets about Brewfest, nobody really talks about the bands, but Howard, always, Howard Ross always books great unsung talent, like bands you really haven't heard of but have a presence on social media. You have to be a music aficionado. And he does a great job of, of making sure that there's an eclectic mix of different genres of music that build and that work good together and uh, that, are, that are enjoyable by a wide demographic but are different and interesting, you know? And, that, and I think that that is a great a correl- a, a correlation to um, the, the brew stands because they try to, to, uh, to present all kinds of different brews you know, each brewery has a different different blend of brews. But hopefully, that you can mix and match them, and they ha- and they kind of have there's a continuity. Well, that, I think they do the same thing with the music. So you can sample some great music, sample some great food. You know, so just being part of an event social that people time. work so hard. Social media. Time. Hi there. Here we go, social media. Yeah. Here we go. So that's what brings me back. Being part of something where because all these people have a dream, you know, and I've been a struggling comedian for years. And a lot of these small breweries that had a dream of, of creating their own brew, and they're creating their own brew, and uh, you know, making the dream come true. You know, absolutely. You can hear a little bit behind us right now. You get you got Wild Plains playing right now. Yeah. Great music. You've had a few other people playing today, and it's a great mix of people. It's it's amazing. This is a really fun. It's very mellow too. Very mellow. It's a it's a it's a really fun time. Absolutely. I, I've mentioned this a couple times today. You don't see people getting drunk here. You see people having a good time, but you're never seeing people get carried out of here. Like I, somebody asked me, why doesn't this go to like 11 or 12? And I said, well, it's called Brew Fest, not Drunk Fest. Absolutely. Good call. These party people. These are people who are connoisseurs of great uh, craft beers. And usually, usually people who enjoy craft beer aren't the kind of people who drink to get drunk. And when you when you drink like me in moderation, me, it's little samples, you know, with a cheeseburger, you know, I can have a couple of little two-ounce samples or something, and uh, you don't want to waste it. When you're only going to drink a, a beer or two, you want to make sure you're drinking something special. And it's all about the taste and stuff. It's really not a party vibe, you know. But it is. It's a party, but people are cool. People come here to have great conversations. And uh, it's a mature crowd, I would say. Absolutely. It's not fun. No, absolutely. This is a blast. This is one of the most fun brew fests I've ever been to. Jeff, what else would you like to get out about people? How can people find you online so that people can... Online? Um, uh, my, uh, my nickname is Jeff the Fun Dude. It's because I worked for Carnival. All these are the fun ships. And I like to have fun, dude. Absolutely. Well, my website is jefftefundude.com. There's audio tracks. Uh, there's a link to my book. I wrote a book, The Fun Dude's Guide to Cruising, a humorous handbook for taking your first cruise and living to complain about it. It's available on Amazon.com. And uh, I have a special with the Dry Bar Comedy Network. They're one of the uh, leaders of dr- clean comedy specials. And uh, they're out of Utah. And uh, you can find it on the app. It'll come out probably at the beginning of September, end of uh, August. And if you go to my website, jeffthefundude.com, or follow me at Jeff the Fun Dude on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. You'll be able to see when it's released. And I signed a record deal with On Tour Records. I'll be I'll be taping at the world famous Comedy Castle in Detroit, where uh, where Tim Allen got his start. And then uh, it'll come out in next year. Awesome, Jeff. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.